morning, good afternoon, good evening at whatever time you're looking at this video or at whatever time you're viewing this video. This video basically discusses function point analysis end to end from the aspect of estimation. It's a two, two to two and a half hours of video, so definitely it's a very lengthy video. And it's impractical that somebody could really sit and hear this whole video for two hours or two and a half hours. So what you can do is basically you can uh, listen to the video every 15 minutes, you know, or you can break up the whole video into 15, 15 minutes. Listen to a video of 15 minutes, take a rest, understand what you have listened. Then again, start from the end where you have left out and again, read the next 15 minutes. In this way, you know, you won't get tired and also you will understand function point analysis in a much better fashion. Because if you miss any part of uh, function point analysis like a EI, EO, EQ, if you don't understand some parts of it, when you actually go to do estimation, you can probably uh, mess up the whole estimation. So take rest, understand something. If you think that you are tired, close your PC off, come the next day again, and then again start the video from where you left out. I think that's the best way to hear, to hear this video. Uh, because I myself have recorded this video, uh, I have taken approximately a month to record. So definitely, you cannot take a, a day or you know you cannot sit continuously for two hours to just hear this video. So I hope that you will enjoy this video. I hope that you will uh, understand function point analysis and you should be able to apply function point analysis practically in your project. So what I will do is uh, basically, I will just outline that what this whole video will cover so that you know uh, you are well uh, aware that what you're going to learn. So basically, these are the sections what you see in your video we are going to basically discuss about. We'll start first with uh, the fundamentals of function point analysis, you know, and try to understand why function point came into existence. Then we will try to see application boundaries. We'll look into different aspects of function points. Then we'll, go, we'll walk through all the aspects of function points, EI, EO, EQ. We'll go through general system characteristics. We'll apply productivity factor. We'll see that how SDLC uh, uh, should be, uh, what you call, should be, uh, should be considered when we do function point analysis. We'll see that how we allocate resources, okay, and then we'll finally use WBS and uh, do a project counting end to end. So this is what the complete uh, uh, you can say the index of this whole video is, and uh, we will try to follow this uh, this whole points as a chapter as we go ahead. Okay, so the first thing is fundamentals, basically. Function point is nothing but it's a unit of measure for software size. So when we say a unit of measure, it means you know it gives it allocates some points. For example, uh, we can say you know this is 10 centimeter. So centimeter is nothing but a measure, a unit of measure. You know you can allocate uh, some points like uh, probably you can say that uh, this task is difficult. Okay, and you can say okay, you can grade it saying you know that okay the simple task is one, the the medium task is two and uh, uh, the tough task is three so one two three are nothing but you know you allocated some kind of unit and on that unit you can then do uh, sizing so in the same way function point you know it will when you say that you know that is a hundred function point it is thousand function points it is nothing but it's a measure uh, which basically is assigned to a software size so the first very important thing is a unit of measure for software size based on user requirements the most important factor here which the definition says is user requirements so basically whenever you estimate using function point one of the very important aspect is user if the user doesn't see that aspect you know then you cannot estimate it I'm going to say let's say that you have a customer screen uh, you can tell that okay behind the customer screen there is a windows task running you know it is this and that and that but if the user cannot visualize why the task is there then you probably cannot estimate that using function point so it's a unit of measure for software size based on user requirements. It was uh, uh, it was developed by Mr. Allen in 1970s as an alternative of lines of code. If you look at the old ways of estimation, people used to um, uh, used to count lines of code and do estimation. But one of the biggest uh, drawbacks of lines of code was that uh, first was the language. For example, that if you're using COBOL, you know you can probably uh, make a button using thousand lines of code but if I'm using Visual Basic or I'm using Shisha or Java I, I have to just drag and drop from the uh, toolbox so uh, that, that was the biggest problem with lines of code basically what kind of language you're using can vary a lot or the estimation can vary a lot 
accordingly. The second problem of lines of code was that it was difficult to visualize or to uh, think about that how much lines of code can be there uh, when when you have a requirement document at your hand. So, for example, that if somebody says that okay, I want to do, I want to make this customer screen or this supplier screen, it's very difficult to visualize that thousands lines of code or it is hundred lines of code. So, definitely lines of code uh, was not a proper way, I'll say rather. But in the old times, it still worked well because. Uh, uh, it was mostly DOS oriented programs, but as soon as uh, nowadays today's program is more RAD oriented, the UIs are uh, more uh, uh, made from toolboxes. So uh, the lines of code started becoming outdated. And in 1970s, you know, uh, Mr. Allen introduced source, uh, something called as function points, you know, which basically estimated using from the user requirement perspective. <coughs> So, software measure is nothing but it's a numerical value assigned to a software value, a software project. Uh, so, in the sense, you know, if you have, uh, let's say that you say, okay, this is a customer screen, so you can say that it's a simple, high or low complexity. So, you assign some kind of numerical value to it. So, in software measure, uh, when we use function point, we assign in the same way a numerical value and that is nothing but your uh, software measure. So basically, your software measure can be function points, can be use case points, can be lines of code, some number, you know, which identifies the complexity. And these numbers can then be fed and converted into a proper number which, which, can, which we can use to do estimation or which we can use to arrive to a monetary factor. So basically, by these uh, numerical values, software measure, uh, numerical values, you can get man days, man months or man hours. So the whole point of this exercise will be that, you know, to try to understand that how we can actually calculate the, calculate the function points and then finally convert this function point into man days so that, you know, we can arrive to, a, uh, arrive to some amount, you know, which you can basically use for uh, doing, uh, use for doing your billing to your customer or use to, uh, you can say, prepare a proposal uh, for your customer. So as I said that, you know, everything is from the user's perspective. If the user doesn't see that, then uh, you cannot estimate that. So estimation is, is focused from the end user's perspective. That is the whole uh, main important theme of function point. So in other words, as I said, you know, if requirement is realized by the end user, then only you can estimate that section. And the best part, uh, because it is from the user's perspective, uh, so the customer gets a feeling that, yes, that he will only pay for what he sees. So the other way of thinking is, you know, you pay for what you what you see. Now, uh, what we will do is that now what we have understood, uh, now that we have understood that okay, that everything is from the user's perspective, we'll try to understand that uh, what are the different angles that a user sees when he sees the application. So here's the application. The first thing a user would like to see is that he wants to make some entries. So from user's perspective, he's, he thinks that there are internal files, you know, where he, ac he actually makes entries and the data is stored. The second thing a user thinks is, uh, user's perspective is, normally is that he sends queries and he gets outputs. The third perspective is that uh, he, he sends queries and he gets uh, complicated outputs. So, uh, you can see that, you know, over here I have defined two queries. One is this is a simple output and one is a complex output like a big file or a graph or something and third from the user's perspective is that yes his application can basically go and refer some external files which can be a credit card or a payment gateway